Well, hello, retro computing enthusiasts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And it's time for an unboxing. The FedEx man just handed me this a few minutes ago, and I can't wait to get into it because there's something in here that I have wanted for a very long time. So let's open her up and see how the shipping went. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a windy day, and we've got packing peanuts. Okay. That can be a bit of a problem. All right. Let me see if I can get this out of here without spreading peanuts all over the yard. Those peanuts, especially the pink ones, anti-static ones, I can reuse those. They come in handy. Not to mention, I don't want to make a mess in the yard. So somebody named Mike will have to clean it up. All right. Oh, come on out of there. Heavy and big. So I've wanted one of these for a long time. Years and years ago, I got to look inside one of these. And I've wanted one ever since. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. And we will start unwrapping the bubble wrap. And I want it not because of what it does or did but because of what's inside it. This is a case of the parts are greater than the whole. At least in my humble opinion. As a retro computing enthusiast. Alright. So what have we got here? All right, so what exactly is this thing and why am I so excited about it? Okay, it is a data race, mock DS16 digital switching statistical multiplexer. It's quite a mouthful. What does all that mean? Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure. I believe that what this thing does is it's from back in the day, the 80s when a lot of people were working with dumb terminals, a lot of people were working with standalone computers, they were working with timeshare systems, but the company might only have one main modem, or they might only have, you know, one mini computer or one mainframe computer, and all these other people needed to have access to these assets. And what this thing would do, it would multiplex the serial data lines coming from all these other computers and terminals and send them out to whatever doohickey the people needed to use, be it the modem, be it uh, the mini computer, the mainframe, whatever, another computer, whatever. And I think it used um, a statistical calculation engine in here to sort of guess in advance where data was going to have to go to sort of prioritize it and make the flow a little smoother most of the time and speed it up. That's my best guess as to what these things did. They are as rare as hen's teeth. I got a look inside one of these years and years ago, and ever since then, I've wanted one in the worst way. How come? Because of its innards. I have no use for statistical multiplexer. I don't have to multiplex. You know, let's look at the back of it. Yeah. Dozens of serial lines on the back of it. I, I have no use for multiplexing dozens of serial lines, all right? Yeah, um, and a lot of these older older units than this one, these would have been 25-pin uh, D-shell ports like these down here. But these are these are more modern. They almost look like RJ45. But uh, either way, that's what it was for. It was multiplexing serial data in and then out to somewhere else. In from somewhere, out to somewhere. In from somewhere, out to somewhere. And this thing was... You know, it had telco lines, it had the modem built into it. So, you know, it it did all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff that I have no use for. 
So what do I have a use for? Well, this is a case of the parts are really worth more than the whole. Kind of like why cars get stolen to be stripped. Because they're worth more as parts than they are as cars. This thing is worth a lot to me as parts. And we will take a look at some of its parts. And I'll show you why they're worth so much to me. Now, it's been a few years since I've had one of these open. But as I recall, it was pretty simple. This smoked glass faceplate comes right off. Well, smoked plexiglass. And there's a couple of screws here that need to come out. And that frees up this plate right here, which frees up all the cards inside. And what cards would they be, you might be thinking to yourself. Well, let's take a look. Well, will you look at that? Look at that. I'll zoom in on that for you. That is a complete Z80 computer on a board. Z80 processor, EEPROM, 32K of RAM, 1, 2, 3, 4, SIO, 0 chips, each one with two serial ports on it. we got eight serial ports here. So, way cool. Got uh, those level shifting chips there. Yeah. So these are uh, RS-232 level shifting chips here. Complete Z80 board right there. And you know what? I could modify this to do my own thing. I could pull this EEPROM out, put in my own firmware, and figure out how to power this thing, figure out the pinout on the, the connector there, and wow, I got myself a complete Z80 system on a board. I could interface a serial keyboard with it, um, figure out some way, or, or just use a just use a terminal with it, or a terminal emulator program. So yeah, so that's that's one reason why I wanted it, but that's not the only one. Here's another. Got another one of those. So there's two, basically complete Z80 systems in this thing. But wait, that's not all. third board here. This one's a little busier, but this is another complete Z80 system. Z80 processor, EEPROM, 32K of RAM, got two SIO zeros here. Now this is the modem right here. It says modem two, this is modem one. So this is part is the modem, but still it's a complete Z80 computer. I don't have to use it as a modem. Who uses a modem anymore? You know? So I can figure out how to interface this. It just uses it as a, uh, as a computer. Look, it's even got a speaker on it. I can make noise with this thing. Cool. But wait, there's more. We're not done yet. This keeps getting more interesting the further in we go. Okay. Look at this. Is this a thing of beauty or what? This is a Motorola 68000 computer. On a board. Again, it's a complete computer. We got the 68,000 chip. We got a lot of EEPROM. We got, what is that, 96K of RAM. Um, I have to look that chip up. That may be serial. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll bet there's some sort of serial communication on this board. If not, well, I'm sure I can find a way to hack into it and get a terminal on this thing. So, yeah, so we've got three Z80 boards here, and one Motorola 68000 board. Um, looks like it's got some uh, battery backup for the RAM on here. I didn't notice that on the other boards. No. So this may be low power static RAM, or maybe that's backing up something else. But uh, way cool. I've been wanting to play with the 68000 architecture. I've been wanting to play with it for a long time, and now I've got a complete... 68,000 board. I was going to build a breadboard computer with a 68,000 chip, just like my Jazz 80. Well, I'll put a link to my Jazz 80 playlist in the upper right. Check that out if you're interested in breadboard computers. But now I've got one I can play with right here. I mean, I can put my own firmware in it and uh, do whatever I want. And, well, it's it's not we're not done yet because we still got the chassis. This is a good-looking chassis. 
let me tell you, this is a good looking chassis. It's got power supply in it. It'll power all these boards, you know. Uh, however many of them I want to run in there, whether it's one Z80 or two Z80s or two Z80s and uh, 68,000, or hey, all four boards. This can power them all. It's got a power supply. Dice rack. It's got this lovely, lovely smoked plexiglass front panel. All these boards have lots of LEDs on them. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can build something like an Altair or an inside and have all kinds of blinking lights going on. Would that be cool or what? How retro is that? Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm having a nerdgasm over here. Pardon me. So yeah, that's why I've wanted one of these for so long. And they're so hard to find. I mean, I challenge you to go out there and find another one of these Data Race Mach DS16 units. Good luck. All right. I paid a little more than I wanted to for this one. You know, but really not that much when you consider it's got four complete computers in it. Plus, it's a nice chassis with power supply and front panel. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it was a deal, even though I paid a little more than I wanted to. Because... You just can't find them. When you see one, you got to buy it, okay? It's it's a seller's market for these things. And fortunately, the seller wasn't asking as much as I've seen some people ask for these in the past. So, yeah, get out there. Look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, wherever. See if you can find one of these if you're at all interested in retro computing and you just want to have, you know, like, hey, a complete Z80 computer dropped in your lap. A complete... 68,000 computer dropped in your lap. Just, you know, easy peasy. Low low entry point into retro computing. Okay? You don't have to wire it all up on a breadboard or solder up a kit. It, it's here. You just got to learn how a little bit of assembly language programming and get the bare metal up and running and you're good to go. Fortunately, that's my specialty. Whew. All right. Wow, I am a happy camper. I've been wanting one of these for a lot of years, and now I got it. So I think in the future, you're going to be seeing these boards featured in some of my future videos on this channel. You know, I will pop the EEPROMs out, put my own firmware in. You know, first I got to map out where the hardware is. Um, and, uh, hey, we'll be up and running, you know, easy peasy, I think, really quick with these. I mean, especially this. This is going to give me a big head start jump on playing around with the 68,000 architecture. Of course, I don't have to build a power supply. I don't have to build a cabinet. It's all here. Okay, so enough of me having a nerdgasm. Let me put this stuff all back together and uh, put it in a safe place until I'm ready to do something with it. Because i got about three dozen other projects in the works right now, so... I gotta knock some of them out before I start playing around with this stuff though. I'll be thinking about it. And some of the cold code, code I'm writing for the NABU, the Jazz 80, the Teletech System Master, maybe even the uh, oh I, I got something else coming that, that, that hasn't made a video of it yet, so that's gonna remain a surprise. But I, I got four other Z80 systems out there I'm working on. And some of the code I'm developing for them, you know, could wind up on these boards over here. And well I'm going to have to start developing some 68,000 code. But, hey, subscribe to see those future videos. They're vaporware at the moment, but they're coming. And check out my two other channels. Um, I got uh, Omega Geek 64, where normally equipment like this would be torn down and rendered down for its gold and silver and other precious metals. But not this stuff. I'm keeping this stuff, and I'm going to play with it. Can't wait to start playing with it. Uh, and my other channel, Mike's Lapidary and Fossils. Check that out if you're at all interested in rock pounding, rock tumbling, uh, rock cutting, slabbing, cabbing, fossil hunting, fossil prep. Check that out. And uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go play with my toys. Bye.